Every once in a while, I get a comment questioning the purpose of making matching blade width shims for certain blades that I use here at the table saw. And some wonder if simply using a drill bit that's the same diameter as the blade measures wide will produce the same results. If this is one of your first times watching one of my videos, you're no doubt wondering what the heck I'm even talking about. So here's a quick rundown to get you up to speed. A lot of times with table saw joinery, there can be a lot of guesswork. I like to make blade width shims to match certain blades here at the table saw. That way, instead of measuring and adjusting and guessing, the shim helps me offset the blade curve for perfectly sized dados and grooves, half laps, minor splines, and the like. Now, I already have a whole bunch of videos explaining how to easily make a shim to perfectly match any saw blade and some of the different ways you can use it here at the saw, and I'll link them down below in the video description for those of you that are interested in learning more. But today I wanna to satisfy my own curiosity once and for all and see if this old carpentry trick really does work for woodworking. So we're gonna bust out the old beater crosscut sled, which if anyone's wondering, works pretty great since we outfitted it with the zero clearance tape, and I'm gonna set it up to make dados to accept a scrap of 12 mil birch plywood. My saw blade of choice is going to be the Forest Woodworker 2 number one grind, which leaves a perfectly flat bottom cut. This is always one of my most recommended saw blades, but a few of you recently have mentioned that the price has gone up quite a bit. I'm gonna leave a couple of links to some more cost-friendly options in the description for you guys. Now this blade claims to be an eighth inch wide, but I measured just a bit shy. I'm gonna use two different drill bits just in case, an eighth inch standard twist bit and an eighth inch brad point bit, both measuring pretty darn close to what the saw blade measures, but still not an actual eighth of an inch. So if the drill bits and the blade measure so close to the same, that means I should get a pretty snug fit, which means it's actually not looking too good for the shim, especially because my so-called perfect shim measures at about 0.124, a few thousandths wider than what the blade measures. With my measurements taken for reference, I start cutting. Now to do this, I clamp a stop block to the sled, put the material going into the dado between the stop block and the material that I'm cutting, and I make a pass. Then I remove it, replace it with one of the drill bits, make another pass, and then hog out the waste. Then I'll do this exact same process for the other drill bit and the shot made shim, and then we can take a look at the results. Interestingly enough, there's a bit of a gap in both dados that were cut using drill bits, but the dado using the shim fits snug. Using feeler gauges to measure the gaps, they're between eight and 10 thousandths wider than the material going into the dado, a bit too wide for decent dados. Now, what kind of witchcraftery is at play here? It's hard to say really. It could be simple expansion and contraction of the metals, Although I doubt it makes much of a difference here because in this particular application, we're not producing a lot of heat buildup. It could be that the teeth measure a certain amount, but are positioned in a way that make the overall cut wider than what it really measures. And it could just be a simple combination of the run out of the arbor, the blade, who knows? What I do know is that the path the blade actually makes is about 0.124 and the shim is around 0.124 and that's a match. And the truth is, is that your results might differ from my own because different drill bits, blades, even material can all claim to be a certain measurement and yet fall outside of those specs. But in reality, sometimes a drill bit trick works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes none of these hard measurements really mean anything at all and it's best to let the materials do the talking and see what plays well together. And hey, even if sloppy dados are perfectly acceptable for whatever work you do, this trick could still be beneficial if you ever find yourself wanting to make miter splines. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you in the next video.